Where are you from? Just like any other new student, this was a question I frequently came across when I first moved to Thailand. Now, most people answer this question with no issues. However, having lived in three different countries prior to Thailand, being South Korea, the U.S., and the Philippines, I hesitated and asked myself, "Where am I from?" Even something as innocuous and simple as the question, "Where are you from?" sprouted into this complex process of thinking. So, in the end, I explained how I have Korean blood with an American passport, living in Thailand. Sounds a little complicated, right? This brings me to the heart of my talk. In a world where they move around often and are exposed to many diverse cultures, third culture kids often struggle to identify what culture they belong to. As a result, they hesitate to answer the question, "Where are you from?" But what if I told you that food plays a crucial role in helping third culture kids establish their identity? Hi, my name is Eric, and today I will share with you how even through constant moving, four different countries, and cultural confusion. Food helped me establish my cultural identity. But before we address this issue, we first must know what a third culture kid is. According to U.S. sociologist Ruth Hill Usim, third culture kids are children who spend their formative years in places that are not their parents' homeland. Some famous third culture kids include former U.S. President Barack Obama, Queen singer Freddie Mercury, and cellist Yo-Yo Ma. Now I'll share with you how food helped me navigate the complex maze of cultural identity. The story begins in Seoul, South Korea. I was born to Korean parents and raised around Korean standards, but after just three short years, my family and I moved to Northern Virginia in the United States. The town I lived in was predominantly a white community with children who had never even left the state, let alone the country. Consequently, many kids were never really exposed to the thick aroma or unfamiliar shapes of Korean food. I remember when I was 10 years old. My mother would always pack me traditional Korean lunches, such as rice and kimchi, kimbap, and soybean soup. And at home, I absolutely loved these dishes and would eat them every day. But at school, I'd often be ridiculed by the other kids. What is that? Or that smells? They'd say. So over time, I grew embarrassed and even a little resentful. Not of my mom or my lunch, but of myself. Why can't I just be normal? I asked. Unfortunately, this desire to assimilate and conform to cultural norms led me to asking my mother for a more normal lunch of PB and J or a ham sandwich. And being the kind mother she is, she fulfilled my request and started packing me the lunches I asked for. I was finally happy to not be mocked for my school lunch, but it just didn't feel right. I mean, these lunches tasted fine, but they're missing the motherly finesse and pungency that I love so much. So, in just a few days, I returned to eating stinky Korean food. I found that in an attempt to push away Korean culture, it made me realize that's a part of who I am, so I could not expel it from my life. And. I'm not the only one who couldn't escape from food. For example, in the memoir *Crying in H Mart*, even though the one source of Korean culture in her life, her mother, passed away, Michelle Zahner still wandered through the aisles of Korean grocery stores to connect with the culture she knew so dearly. Or the story of *Fish Cheeks* by Amy Tan, where in order to impress an American date, she pushed away the traditional dishes of her Chinese heritage to appear more normal, only to realize decades later. Her mother made all of her favorite meals for dinner that night, and it's not just these stories that illustrate how culture is embedded in food. In fact, a study conducted by the Harvard Gazette found that the sense of smell has the strongest link to memory than any of the four other senses. So, all those times I wandered through the kimchi aisle of my local Korean grocery store, or grilled pork belly on crackling charcoals, I was subconsciously fostering my cultural identity. Now. Moving around and being surrounded by so many diverse cultures always allowed me to connect with others quite easily. On the other hand, I also never really felt like I belonged anywhere. I have an American passport, but whenever I visited the U.S., I was only ever there to see family or go on vacation. But one thing that always followed me was Korean food. Regardless of where we live—Virginia, Philippines, or Thailand. 
my mother would always track down the nearest Korean grocery store. Consequently, always being surrounded by Korean food with the constant aroma of sizzling purgogi or the thick pungency of soybean paste allowed me to vicariously return to the country I lived in for only three years. Fortunately, the Korean Herald also says that there are over 33,499 Korean restaurants across 90 countries. So if you're Korean and ever feel lost in a foreign country, return to your nearest Korean restaurant to reconnect with your culture. So remember these stories? They demonstrate how cultural identity can be found through food. For instance, even though Michelle Zahner's only source of Korea was gone in her life, she can never avoid the aisles at H Mart because they're a part of her. Similarly, Amy Tan tried so hard to suppress the traditional dishes of her Chinese heritage to appear more normal to her date, but she couldn't because they're a part of her. Even I cannot assimilate into American standards by changing my school lunch because it was a part of me. So even though my Korean language skills are pretty basic, I only lived in South Korea for three years and often switched countries. One thing that always followed me was Korean food. So going back to that question of where are you from, this one constant in my life cemented my identity and I can confidently say that I'm Korean. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from today, it's this. Food is more than something we just eat. It connects people. It brings back memories, whether good or bad. And most importantly, it helps you find an identity, even if you don't believe you have one. Thank you.